Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to work this negative binomial example. So um, this is in the PDF notes in my stat lab. So when you go to my stat lab and go to the course tools menu and click on document sharing, and these are all the folders where you see all the PDFs. And then you guys actually, I believe, have them also in, um, in Blackboard. But the negative binomial, here it is. So these are the notes on the negative binomial. Again, these are in my math lab, for, in Blackboard, I'm sorry. And there's a couple of examples worked here. If I scroll down to the bottom, I believe there's a couple of extra examples. Yeah, I did. So I put a couple of practice problems, as you can see, you know, with the answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show you how to do question two here, this oil company example. Uh, it's a pretty standard negative binomial question. You know, the problem with negative binomial distribution is that... Um, the textbook doesn't have this material in it, so I supplemented it. And my math lab um, doesn't have a lot of questions on it, so I don't have a separate homework assignment on it. So what I want to do is, you know, give you an example that will, you know, work through it, you know, kind of like I did this stuff here, where all the, um, you know, the worked examples are. So let me show you. Let's just talk about this. This is talking about drilling for oil. So an oil company conducts a geological study that indicates that an exploratory oil well should have a 10% chance of striking oil. All right, so, you know, in the question, um, there's successes and failures, you know, when, they, when you work with the geometric and negative binomial distributions. So um, this is telling you, you know, that the, the probability of the success is 10%. So, you know, let's um, I identify what P and Q are. So P would be 10%, which we'll write that as a decimal. And then Q, which, remember, is 1 minus P which, you know, one subtract 10% would be 90%, and that will be, um, you know, 0.9. All right, so there's our P and Q for the negative binomial. All right, so look at letter A. What's the probability the first strike comes on the fifth well drilled? So, all right, that's the probability. So the first, let's call that a success. You know, that, and we'll call it, again, a success you know, being finding um, the oil well. The first success is on the fifth try. Now, when you talk negative binomial and geometric, I like to think of it as how many times did I lose before I won? So if you consider winning, um, you, know, you know, finding the oil well, and the first time that happened was on your fifth try, that means the other four times you failed. So I like to say it like this. So I'll put, you know, this is similar to the probability of four fails before your first success. I like to think of the geometric and negative binomial distributions like this. How many times did I lose before I won? All right, so actually, since we're only talking one win here, one success, uh, this is actually just the geometric distribution. So remember, this is just um, Q to the K power multiplied by P. <clears throat> and Q is 0.90, so I'll write that as 0.9 to the K. Now remember, K is the number of times you lose, which in this case is 4. So that's 0.9 to the fourth power. And then, of course, times the P, which is 0.1. You know, 10%, those zeros, you don't need to write them, obviously. And then you can work that right on the calculator. So, you know, point, uh, sorry, point 0.9 to the fourth power multiplied by point 0.1. All right, so there you have it, point zero six five six one. So I'll round this and say, hey, this is probably about point zero six six. And, you know, in... Any kind of um, online scenario, um, they always tell you what to round to. You know, so you could round that number to you know whatever it says to in, in the directions. You know, in, uh, in in any kind of homework assignment. Historically, they use four decimal places, and that's because tables used to be rounded to four decimal places. You know, for accuracy. You know, be in times before calculators. Uh, by the way, alternatively, you could also work this in the calculator by going uh, second distribution and finding the geometric distribution, geomet PDF. And geomet PDF, what it requires as its input, uh, it requires two things. It requires the chances you win, which was 10%. And then the second input requires when do you want that win to happen? 
I want the win to happen on the fifth trial. This is just how the syntax works for the GMET PDF operation. And if you do that, as you can see, you get the same result. Now, also, you could do this in Minitab. Um, the only problem is Minitab will do the geometric distribution, so it will do this question. Uh, what it won't do is um, the negative binomial, because unfortunately, Minitab Express doesn't have neg the negative binomial distribution. And neither does this TI calculator, as you can see. When I go to the distribution menu and start scrolling down, you know, it's just not there, unfortunately. So um, it's unfortunate. All right, so there you have it, letter B. And by the way, that first example in letter A, that was not negative binomial technically, it's geometric. And as you can see, the geometric distribution is technically a special case of the negative binomial. All right, so letter B, what's the probability the third strike comes on the seventh well drilled? All right, so the probability the third success is on the seventh try. All right, so once again, I like to reword this. That's similar to um, the probability of four fails before the third success. All right, so now, um, you know, there's a formula for the negative binomial. And what makes this, you know, negative binomial is the fact that we're talking about more than one success here. So remember the formula for negative binomial. It's R plus K, subtract 1, choose R minus 1, Q to the K power, P to the R power. All right, so um, remember, fails is K. And successes is R. So this 4 is the K. That's the K right there. And then the R value, that's the 3. All right, so if you add R plus K, you get 7, of course. And it's the total number of trials, right? So the, this combination becomes 7 subtract 1, which is 6. And then 3 subtract 1, which is 2. So that's 6 choose 2. Q to the K power. Now remember, Q is 0.9. That's 0 0.9 to the 4. And then P is 0.1. And that's to the 3. All right, so we have to work that in the calculator because unfortunately, like I said, um, you know, Minitab Express doesn't have this function built into it. All right, so I'm going to type in 6, choose 2. So it's 6, math, move over to probability, and choose option 3, NCR. So 6, choose 2 multiplied by 0.9 to the fourth, multiplied by 0.1 to the third. All right, 0 0.0098. Now because, of course, once again, we could round this to whatever we feel like it. This time I rounded the four. We could also round that to, to about 0 0.01, right, if you want to round to, uh, you know, the nearest a thousandth. All right, so pretty standard. You know, this formula is a little bit ugly, but, you know, when you take the in-class exam for this material, it's, um, you know, you're going to have access to all the formulas and everything, so you don't have to memorize that. Uh, letter C, what's the probability the fourth strike comes on the 11th well, well drilled? All right, so letter C, the probability the fourth success is on the 11th try. All right, well, that's similar to the probability. Well, you know, if the fourth win happens on the 11th try, that means that there were seven losses, right? So seven losses before the fourth win. So seven uh, fails before the fourth success. All right, so once again... R plus K minus 1, choose R minus 1, Q to the K times P to the R. So let's plug and chug here. So this is going to be 11 take off 1, so that's 10, choose 3, right? Because, again, R is 4. Remember, R is the number of successes, right? So there's R. And over here, the fails is K. 0.9 to the K, which in this case is 7, 
and then 0.1 to the 3. Uh, sorry, that would be 0.1 to the 4. Because r is 4 there. All right, so let's go ahead and type this in the calculator and grab the answer. Uh, so 10. Choose 3 times 0.9 to the 7 times 0.1 to the 4th. 0 0.0057. All right. Finally, <clears throat> letter D. What's the mean invariance of the number of wells that must be drilled if the oil comp company wants to set up three producing wells? So when you see this, three producing wells, that would be three successes. In other words, R is three there. All right, so remember, the nice thing about these distributions is they have really nice formulas for their means and standard deviations, you know, means and variances, really. Uh, so this is actually letter D. So the mean for the negative binomial is RQ divided by P. Again, you don't have to memorize these formulas, don't forget. They're on the formula sheet. All right, so R in this case was 3. Q was 0.9. And P is 0.1. Make sure I got that correct. Yep, R was 3 there. All right, so 3 times 0.9. divided by 0.1. All right, that's 27, which, by the way, means, on average, you're going to need to drill um, 27 times before you find your third success. That's what that's saying. And it wants the variance as well. So the variance is actually RQ over P squared which is 3 times 0.9 over 0.1 squared. So 3 times 0.9 divided by 0.1 squared. That's 270. Now, by the way, it doesn't ask for it. I don't believe. Let's just check. No, but just once, as you can see, the mean and variance only. But if, you know, you wanted the standard deviation, remember, so the standard deviation, which we use as sigma, that's the square root of the variance, which would be the square root of 270. So if I take the square root of that, the square root of 270 on my calculator, you'd see that's about 16.4. And don't forget the symbol for the variance is sigma squared. So sigma squared is the variance. Sigma is the standard deviation. All right, so I hope this helps you out. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.